Book Six, Chapter Seven of the Wars of the Jews. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Wars of the Jews by Josephus, translated by William Whiston, Chapter Seven. How John tyrannized over the rest and what mischiefs the zealots did at Masada, how only Vespasian took Gadara, and what actions were performed by Placidus. By this time John was beginning to tyrannize, and thought it beneath him to accept of barely the same honors that others had, and joining to himself by degrees a party of the wickedest of them all, he broke off from the rest of the faction, this was brought about by his still disagreeing with the opinions of others and giving out injunctions of his own in a very imperious manner so that it was evident he was setting up a monarchial power now some submitted to him out of their fear of him and others out of their good will to him for he was a shrewd man to entice men to him both by deluging them and putting cheats upon them nay Many there were that thought they should be safer themselves, if the causes of their past insolent actions should now be reduced to one head, and not a great many. His activity was so great, and that both in action and in counsel, that he had not a few guards about him, yet was there a great party of his antagonists that left him, among whom envy at him weighed a great deal while they thought it a very heavy thing to be in subjection to one that was formerly their equal but the main reason that moved men against him was the dread of monarchy for they could not hope easily to put an end to his power if he had once obtained it and yet they knew that he would have his pretence always against them that they had opposed him when he was first advanced while every one choose rather to suffer anything whatsoever in war than that when they had been in a voluntary slavery for some time they should afterward perish so the sedition was divided into two parts and john reigned in opposition to his adversaries over one of them but for their leaders they watched one another nor did they at all or at least very little meddle with arms in their quarrels but they fought earnestly against the people and contended one with another which of them should bring home the greatest prey but because the city had to struggle with three of the greatest misfortunes war and tyranny and sedition it appeared upon the comparison that the war was the less troublesome to the populace of them all accordingly they ran away from their own houses to foreigners and obtained that preservation from the romans which they despaired to obtain among their own people and now a fourth misfortune arose in order to bring our nation to destruction there was a fortress of very great strength not far from jerusalem which had been built by our ancient kings both at a repository for their effects in the hazards of war and for the preservation of their bodies at the same time it was called masada those that were called Sicarii had taken possession of it formerly, but at this time they overran the neighboring countries, aiming only to procure to themselves necessaries. For the fear they were then in prevented, their further ravages. But when once they were informed that the Roman army lay still, and that the Jews were divided between sedition and tyranny, they boldly undertook greater matters, and at the feast of unleavened bread, which the Jews celebrate in memory of their deliverance from the Egyptian bondage, when they were sent back into the country of their forefathers, they came down by night, without being discovered by those that could have prevented them, and overran a certain small city called Engadi, in which expedition they prevented those citizens that could have stopped them before they could arm themselves and fight them. They also dispersed them, and cast them out of the city. As for such as could not run away, being women and children, they slew of them above seven hundred. Afterward, when they had carried everything out of their houses, and had seized upon all the fruits that were in a flourishing condition, they brought them into Masada. 
and indeed these men laid all the villages that were about the fortress waste, and made the whole country desolate, while there came to them every day from all parts not a few men as corrupt as themselves. At that time all the other regions of Judea that had hitherto been at rest were in motion by means of the robbers. Now as it is in a human body, if the principal part be inflamed, all the members are subject to the same distemper. So by means of the sedition and disorder that was in the metropolis, had the wicked men that were in the country opportunity to ravage the same. Accordingly, when every one of them had plundered their own villages, they then retired into the desert. Yet were these men that now got together, and joined in the conspiracy by parties, too small for an army, and too many for a gang of thieves. And thus did they fall upon the holy places and the cities. Footnote. By these hera, or holy places, as distinct from cities, must be meant prosoichea, or houses of prayer, out of cities, of which we find mention made in the New Testament and other authors. See Luke 6.12, Acts 16.13.16. They were situated sometimes by the sides of rivers, Acts 16.13, or by the seaside. So did the seventy-two interpreters go to pray every morning by the seaside, before they went to their work. End of the footnote. Yet did it now so happen that they were sometimes very ill treated by those upon whom they fell with such violence, and were taken by them as men are taken in war? but still they prevented any further punishment as do robbers, who as soon as the ravages are discovered, run their way. Nor was there now any part of Judea that was not in a miserable condition, as well as its most eminent city also. These things were told Vespasian by deserters, for although the seditious watched all the passages out of the city, and destroyed all, whosoever they were, that came thither, Yet were there some that had concealed themselves, and when they had fled to the Romans, persuaded their general to come to their city's assistance, and save the remainder of the people, informing him withal that it was upon account of the people's good will to the Romans that many of them were already slain, and the survivors in danger of the same treatment. Vespasian did indeed already pity the calamities these men were in, and arose in appearance, as though he was going to besiege Jerusalem, but in reality to deliver them from a worse siege they were already under. However, he was obliged first to overthrow what remained elsewhere, and to leave nothing out of Jerusalem behind him that might interrupt him in that siege. Accordingly he marched against Gadara, the metropolis of Perea, which was a place of strength, and entered that city on the fourth day of the month Distrus Adar. For the men of power had sent an embassage to him, without the knowledge of the seditious, to treat about the surrender, which they did out of the desire they had of peace, and for saving their effects, because many of the citizens of Gadara were rich men. This embassy the opposite party knew nothing of, but discovered it as Vespasian was approaching near the city, However, they despaired of keeping possession of the city, as being inferior in number to their enemies, who were within the city, and seeing the Romans very near to the city, so they resolved to fly, but thought it dishonorable to do it without shedding some blood, and revenging themselves on the authors of this surrender. So they seized upon Delesus, a person not only the first in rank and family in that city, but one that seemed the occasion of sending such an embassy, and slew him, and treated his dead body after a barbarous manner. So very violent was their anger at him, and then ran out to the city. And as now the Roman army was just upon them, the people of Gadara admitted Vespasian with joyful acclamations, and received from him the security of his right hand, as also a garrison of horsemen and footmen to guard them against the excursions of the renegades. For as to their wall, they had pulled it down, before the Romans desired them to do so, that they might thereby give them assurance, 
that they were lovers of peace, and that, if they had a mind, they could not now make war against them. And now Vespasian sent Placidus against those that had fled from Gadara, with five hundred horsemen and three thousand footmen, while he returned himself to Caesarea with the rest of the army. But as soon as these fugitives saw the horsemen that pursued them just upon their backs, and before they came to a close fight, they ran together to a certain village, which was called Bessenabris, where, finding a great multitude of young men, and arming them, partly by their own consent, partly by force, they rashly and suddenly assaulted Placidus and the troops that were with him. These horsemen at the first onset gave way a little, as contriving to entice them further off the wall, and when they had drawn them into a place fit for their purpose, they made their horse encompass them round, and threw their darts at them. So the horsemen cut off the flight of the fugitives, while the foot terribly destroyed those that fought against them. For those Jews did no more than show their courage, and then were destroyed. For as they fell upon the Romans, when they were joined close together, and as it were, walled about with their entire armor, they were not able to find any place where the darts could enter, nor were they any way able to break their ranks. While they were themselves run through by the Roman darts, and like the wildest of wild beasts, rushed upon the point of other swords, so some of them were destroyed, as cut with their enemies' swords upon their faces, and others were dispersed by the horsemen. Now Placidus' concern was to exclude them in their flight from getting into the village, and causing his horse to march continually on that side of them. He then turned short upon them, and at the same time his men made use of their darts, and easily took their aim at those that were the nearest to them as they made those that were further off turn back by the terror they were in, till at last the most courageous of them break through those horsemen, and fled to the wall of the village. And now those that guarded the wall were in great doubt what to do, for they could not bear the thoughts of excluding those that came from Gadara, because of their own people that were among them, and yet, if they should admit them, they expected to perish with them, which came to pass accordingly. For as they were crowding together at the wall, the Roman horsemen were just ready to fall in with them. However, the guards prevented them, and shut the gates. When Placidus made an assault upon them, and fighting courageously till it was dark, he got possession of the wall, and of the people that were in the city, when the useless multitude were destroyed, but those that were more potent ran away, and the soldiers plundered the houses, and set the village on fire. As for those that ran out of the village, they stirred up such as were in the country, and exaggerating their own calamities, and telling them that the whole army of the Romans were upon them, they put them in great fear on every side, so they got in great numbers together, and fled to Jericho, for they knew no other place that could afford them any hope of escaping. It being a city that had a strong wall, and a great multitude of inhabitants. But Placidus, relying much upon his horsemen, and his former good success, followed them, and slew all that he overtook, as far as Jordan. And when he had driven the whole multitude to the riverside, where they were stopped by the current, for it had been augmented lately by rains, and was not fordable, he put his soldiers in array over against them, so the necessity the others were in provoked them to hazard a battle, because there was no place whither they could flee. They then extended themselves a very great way along the banks of the river, and sustained the darts that were thrown at them, as well as the attacks of the horsemen, who beat many of them, and pushed them into the current. At which fight, hand to hand, fifteen thousand of them were slain, while the number of those that were unwillingly forced to leap into Jordan was prodigious. There were besides two thousand and two hundred taken prisoners. A mighty prey was taken also, consisting of asses and sheep and camels and oxen. Now this destruction that fell upon the Jews, as it was not inferior to any of the rest in itself, 
so did it still appear greater than it really was, and this, because not only the whole country through which they fled was filled with slaughter, and Jordan could not be passed over, by reason of the dead bodies that were in it, but because the lake Asphaltiris was also full of dead bodies that were carried down into it by the river. And now Placidus, after this good success that he had, fell violently upon the neighboring smaller cities and villages, when he took Abila and Julius and Bezemoth, and all those that lay as far as the lake Asphaltites, and put such of the deserters into each of them as he thought proper. He then put his soldiers on board the ships, and slew such as had fled to the lake, insomuch that all Perea had either surrendered themselves, or were taken by the Romans as far as Maheros. End of Book 6, Chapter 7